longer B1 laser. 30 watt, 33 watt, 36 watt, depending on what spec you look at, but it's, it's a powerful laser. So one of the things that uh, people generally buy these higher power lasers for is for cutting. Uh, yes, you can engrave with it, it works just fine for that, it's crank power down. But most people pick them up because they're cutting different types of wood and acrylic and that type of thing. I'm going to go over a few things about cut, cutting. And actually on one of these pieces here, I actually started a fire. So I can tell you that the flame sensor on the longer B1 works perfect because I shut the laser down. And I'll go into all the details about that in a minute. What I want to do first here though is take you down and uh, on the side here close up to show you some of the settings I'm using for cutting and what's good and what's bad and how speed and power can affect how that cut ends up looking. All of these cuts were made with air assist on and one of the nice things with the uh, longer B1 when you're using light burn is it automatically turns the air assist pump on and off. It's a nice feature. Um, I'm also using a honeycomb board underneath. Uh, both of those make a big difference on cutting. So let me get you in close here. I'll explain a few of these different cuts here and what the results were and what I like and don't like. I'm going to start down here with my, these are bears. I use the same uh, graphic for every one of these. The reason is the uh, bear has claws. Uh, bear claws makes me hungry. I like those. Uh, this is a piece of three quarter inch pine, also 19 to 20 millimeter roughly if you're in the, the, doing the metric side. As you can see, it has some fine details. It has some teeth and it has some claws. Well, what happened was on the second pass, this caught fire. Uh, because it started doing that detail and it actually caught this on fire and I wasn't looking at it directly I was over on the other side of the shop and I heard the laser stop and I came over and saw why so the flame detection works well can you cut three quarter inch pine yes you can and here is a piece I cut out as a square so what's the setting for that 100 millimeters per minute 100 percent power and three passes it does make a cut however if the pieces you are cutting out have detail, you're going to start a fire. And if you are going after the pieces that are cut out, they're going to look like this. Now one way to get around that is maybe after your uh, first pass, stop the laser and lower the focus down a little bit. That would probably eliminate some of that uh, concave shape you get there. And you do get a lot of scorching on the back, even with air assist. So as you can see on the back here, uh, on my second pass there, it didn't even come close to getting through. Okay, so you could increase the number of passes and increase the speed. And I'll explain that here when we get to the next bear. Okay, bear number two, and this is on half inch western red cedar. So as you can see, I cut a little block out right there. Uh, it's 500 millimeters per minute, 80% power in two passes. However, when I cut my bear, and I, I do have pretty decent uh, detail on the claws, although it was starting to burn a little bit. It, this was a scrap from something else. As you can see, there's a lot of places that did not cut all the way through. And something else you can need to look at when you're doing our cutting on wood is if you are passing through a knot, because a knot will not cut the same as the rest of the wood. So that's at 500 millimeters per minute, 80% power, two passes. Say it almost cut through. It did cut this block through fine. There were a lot of places on here where the grain changed. It didn't quite make the cut. And I was getting quite a bit of burning by the detail points. At least on this one, you could see the teeth. So now we go to bear number three. Okay, here's bear number three. Still, this is half inch uh, Western Red Cedar. This piece is a little lighter than the others, but it's all the same stuff. Uh, this was at 1,000 millimeters per minute, still using 80% power, but I made three passes. So as you can see, I've got good detail on the claws and on the teeth. However, there were a couple spots here where it did not quite cut through and it chipped out a little bit, which was not a big deal because I was able to just trim that off with a razor knife. Uh, a little bit of scorching on the back there, not too bad, that would sand off pretty easy. So. Again, it always helps to do some tests. So now we'll go to bear number four. Okay, this is bear number four, and I use the same settings as bear number three, except I made four passes instead of three. 
And with the uh, faster speed, it doesn't stop in one place and scorch quite as much. So I've got good definition on the, the claws for the bear and on the teeth. And again, you got a little bit of scorching in the back, but that uh, would sand off pretty easy. And this just fell right out. There wasn't anything to uh, trim or anything like that. Everything just fell right out. So that was a good bear there. Now I want to talk about a power scale and what I can do with quarter inch plywood. This is going to be kind of helter skelter, but I was working on some things. I just want to go over some of these cut settings. So this is a scrap of a piece of quarter inch Luan underlayment, which is still plywood, but they sell it as underlayment and the other side has a little X's on it tells you where to nail it. So this is a power scale and I, I've done a video on doing power scales. And this is the same power scale, but shrunk down. So it can show that at 100% uh, power, I could go 500 millimeters per minute. And again, as I mentioned with when I did the power scale video, after this is made, I just do this. I tap it on the laser and whatever falls out, falls out. So as you can see, there are some parts there that would almost cut out, but not quite. Those don't count. So I just stick with what drops out of there. So uh, I don't like to run 100% power if I don't have to. So what I did with the uh, piece I'm going to show you here in a minute was I went at 400 millimeters per minute at 80% power. So I am up here on this one. So at that setting of 400 millimeters per minute, 80% power, I was able to cut this. Of course, this has been stained and it's just laying on a piece of plywood so for contrast. So one of the things you can do with this if you make it larger, and I did this small on purpose, is you can put photos of uh, maybe family members in all these little hearts. That's what it's designed for. And this is not my design. This was purchased uh, for a project I did a while back. I made it much larger. But I, I just cut one of these out small so you can kind of get an idea on uh, the cut, how precise it is. And as I say, this has been, I've stained this now. That's walnut stain on there. But this is this plywood right here. And it's, well, relatively inexpensive. No uh, lumber or plywood is cheap anymore. That'll give you an idea of the precision of it and how well it cuts. Uh, of course, that's with air assist on and a honeycomb board underneath. Okay, so no, I'm not running the laser in this particular video. This was just a quick one to kind of go over some cut settings and how by increasing the speed and, the num and then increasing the number of passes, you reduce the amount of scorching and the amount of detail being blown out or starting a fire. So that's not a good thing. And incidentally, always be in the area of your laser when you're using it. You don't have to stand right there and gaze at it. Although if you are, make sure you put these on. But always be in the area just in case something happens. Although the laser did shut down like it's supposed to with the flame detection, this was still burning when I came over here, and I had to take a hose and blow and put that out. But again, always stay in the area when you're using your laser. Another little topic there is test grids. These are quick to make. This was just made on a scrap uh, from. We do a lot of uh, layered Halloween decorations, and I'm starting to make a lot of those now because this is August and October 31st isn't all that far away. So I've got a few more of those to get made so I can get them up to the, uh, the shop that sells them. So inexpensive to make, make it on a scrap. Do it for every project you use. Okay, you've been using quarter inch plywood. Well, you went to a different home store and you got another sheet of wood. Is it going to cut the same? Maybe, maybe not. Take a scrap, run a test. It's a lot better than wasting your time and ruining a project. So. If you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'll put a link in the description about the Longer B1. It is, as far as I know, the only 30 watt laser that you can buy for under $1,000. And I've done a couple different videos on it. One is the assembly and setup, and another one is uh, making a baseboard and burning a grid for it. So I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.